Hi, my name is David, and uh, I just wanted to show off one of my favorite features from one of my, my favorite programming language, Haskell. Um, a lot of people post blog articles about Haskell talking about um, sort of esoteric features of functional languages like monads and, um, and zippers and uh, gadgets and all sorts of crazy things that take a, a long time to understand. But I wanted to show a very simple feature from Haskell that uh, m always makes me smile. And when I show it to people, they think it's kind of an interesting idea. And, and it's very simple and unassuming. Uh, and it's the um, Haskell's type safe null value uh, or null data type uh, called maybe. Uh, also referred to as a, sort of the optional value type. And um, maybe is a, is a higher order type that's parameterized by uh, another type. So, so for example, um, you have to have a maybe of some other type. So like a maybe integer or a maybe string or a maybe tuple of integers or a maybe string of people or a maybe dictionary. Um, I'm just gonna open my Haskell interpreter and edit a new file, maybe demo.haskell. Um, so, import prelude hiding maybe. So this first line maybe is uh, included in the, in the prelude or sort of like the standard uh, implicit import that happens in all Haskell files that gives you some of the most common data types and operations on them. And since maybe is included and I want to actually redefine it, I have to uh, explicitly put this hiding line in to make sure uh, my program still compiles when I redefine maybe. Um, so I'm just gonna write a simple Haskell program that um, prints a number. Let's do run Haskell. Okay. So I'm just running my program directly from um, Vim. Uh, but, uh, okay, so back to the maybe data type. I'm going to define it using Haskell's uh, data keyword, which introduces a data type. Um, and the syntax is like this. You have, uh, you name your type. So for example, a color data type. And then you um, sort of describe how you build um, values of that type by giving constructors. Um, so you can build a color as red or blue or green or maybe other int, int, int. Um, so this syntax says that uh, there's a type called color and it can be either red or blue or green or some sort of other value with three integers. So I could have um, red is red. Uh, so I've made a value of type color and I've built it by saying red. Um, and I could say other uh, or um, some made up color called purple orange is other than some weird integer values. Um, so uh, red, blue, green, and other are called um, data constructors because they construct a piece of data. Uh, and the type of that data is what's on the left hand side of the, uh, the equal sign in the, the data declaration. Um, red, blue, and green are constructors that take no parameters. So in a language like Python or uh, a C-like language, you might ex ex expect to see something like this, new red with an empty parameter list to construct it. But in Haskell, um, functions that take no parameters uh, are just, are simply, are used, you run them like this. Um, so just saying red sort of creates a value of type color um, that was built with the red constructor. Um, so the maybe, maybe data type looks like this. Maybe A is just an A or a nothing. So the type is maybe A. It's a parameterized type, meaning that uh, A is a, uh, a type variable. It's like a placeholder, sort of um, uh, in C sharp, it's, you might, or Java, a language with generics, you might see uh, like abstract class, maybe T. Um, that could be your sort of definition of this type. 
um, where t is a type parameter. Um, and then in the program, you might see methods or functions like public, maybe uh, string uh, lookup name. Um, so you call lookup name, and you get back a, a value of type, maybe string, um, where the full type has been instantiated by, by specifying the, the, the parameter uh, t as a string. Um, so we've listed two value constructors, just and nothing. Just takes uh, one parameter, a value of type a, and constructs the maybe a. And nothing doesn't need a parameter um, because it doesn't contain the value. Um, but it also can be used to construct a maybe a. So um, we might have, uh, my name's David, so I'll just say name equals David. Um, and then I might want to specify a value that's a, a, a maybe string. And I could say that's just uh, Judy. Uh, another maybe name is um, nothing. So this first value name is of type string. And because there's no concept of null in Haskell, um, you have to use a completely different type if you want the semantics of uh, a possible value. Um, because there's no way to indicate absence of string if the, the type that the program is expecting is string. You'd have to use this, this maybe type. And a common example that every programmer has encountered, uh, encountered um, of a value, of a, a function or a method that optionally returns a value is looking up, um, looking up a value in a dictionary. So you have a key and you have a dictionary and you, you look for that, uh, look for the value that corresponds to that key in the dictionary and sometimes you get a value back and sometimes you don't. Um, and many languages will return a null uh, if the value is missing and then the programmer has to remember to check the return value to see if they got null. And if they forget to do this, and they work with that value, uh, and it's actually null, but they assume otherwise, um, the, they might get a null reference exception and the program can crash uh, because the compiler doesn't enforce uh, the check for null. But in Haskell, because null is type safe, you can't treat, um, you can't treat values of type nothing as a value of type A or the possible type that the maybe type is sort of encapsulating or helping you uh, express as possibly not there. So for example, um, this function length tells you how long a, uh, a list is. And uh, a string in Haskell is just a list of characters. So I can print out, um, I've written a, a program that just prints the length of my name. I'm going to run it, and I get five. Now, if I change name to maybe name, recall that maybe, maybe name is not a string. It's a maybe string because it's constructed with just. Um, and when I run this program, I get a big error because uh, I'm treating a value of type maybe a, um, which has the semantics of a possibly absent value I'm treating it as a string, and the types don't match, and the compiler complains, and the program does not run. So that's the safety you get with a, a type safe null um, data type. Uh, in other languages, I could just run this program calling uh, this length function on this, this empty or null value, and um, the program would crash. But in my case, my program didn't crash. It didn't even run. Um, so. Why don't I write a function that uh, performs the sort of dictionary lookup, which is the common case of looking for a possibly existing value that may or may not be returned? So I'm just going to make a um, just going to make a, a dictionary of favorite foods, favorite foods, um, and this dictionary is just going to be this, uh, a list of tuples of strings and strings. So I've uh, put this optional um, typing information, this optional type declaration into the program, um, just to try to make this example a little bit, uh, the, the code a little bit easier to follow. Um, but it's completely optional. 
I didn't have to state what the type of favorite foods was, but I just wanted you to be able to see a Haskell type declaration. So these favorite foods, uh, let's see, my favorite food is maybe green papaya, uh, papaya salad. Um, and let's see, my roommate Becky, her favorite food, let's put this onto a new line. I wonder what Becky's favorite food is. Let's just say um, it's sorbet. So pretty small dictionary, two values, um, uh, two tuples of strings. Um, and now we need a lookup function, which I'm just going to define here in sort of a, a straightforward recursive fashion. The lookup function is part of the uh, Haskell standard prelude, but um, I just wanted to define it to use the maybe data type that I've written here. So we're going to hide lookup as well. Um, so let's see, we're going to look up a key in some dictionary. Um, and we're going to define this recursively. So the base case is you're looking for a key in an empty dictionary, and we're going to say it's not present, nothing. Um, when you're looking up a key, uh, in a dictionary with uh, that's not empty, we're going to peel off the first thing. So we have key value as the head of the list, and then uh, the rest of the dictionary. So this is a Haskell's pattern matching syntax. So um, when the lookup function is called, it's going to check the first case, and it's going to say, are we looking for a key in an exhausted list or an empty dictionary? If so, that key is obviously not present in the empty list, so we turn nothing. And if the list isn't empty, it falls through to the second case where um, we know that the dictionary has entries remaining to be searched through. And uh, so this is just sort of a, a, a big O and um, a search for a key into this unstructured data. Um, so it's not very efficient, but it's, it's sort of easy to define and to explain. So in the second case, we peel off this first tuple from the dictionary. We're going to inspect the key to see if, it, if it's equal. Um, uh, and I'll try not to introduce too much Haskell syntax. So if um, key equals k, then just v else look up key and rest. Okay, so that's our function for looking up uh, keys in dictionaries. Um, I'll just run it through it again. If uh, the dictionary is empty, we search through the whole dictionary. Um, we return a nothing. And if the dictionary is non-empty, we sort of ins we inspect the the first key. If it matches the key we're looking we're searching for, then we return the found value wrapped in adjust. Otherwise, we continue searching. So, um, one thing I need to do is make these values printable. Um, so, adding deriving show basically defines two string on maybe uh, automatically. So now my program is just going to print out um, favorite foods, uh, David. And we actually want to look up David and favorite foods. All right, so I'm going to run this program. So I looked up David in the favorite foods dictionary and found just green papaya salad. Awesome. Um, and if I look up a name that's not present, uh, Johan, and run my program, I get nothing. Nothing is as a value of type maybe string, indicating that uh, the value for the key Johan was not present in the dictionary. Um, and this is important because, um, again, since this is a type safe uh, optional value, I can't treat it as a string. And the program will complain if I do. So if I make my program a little bit longer, so we say let fave. Um, so we look up the favorite food, and then uh, I want to 
print its length immediately because foods are just expressed as strings. The program doesn't compile because again I'm treating a maybe string as a string. Um, so that's what you get with type safe null is wherever there's an opportunity for a value to be missing you have to explicitly deal with that possibility um, rather than possibly ignoring it and treating a potentially uh, exceptional value as a valid value of that type. So you can't just treat a null as, as your object or your string. You have to unwrap it first. And uh, there are many ways to unwrap maybe. You can use um, a case statements. So you can say case favorite of just food food we'll print out the food and when there's nothing there we say So we've matched on the value, which is not a string, but it's a maybe string, and we say if it's just and it contains this food, print its length, and if it's nothing, print out the sort of warning message. And we run our program, and it runs just fine. No favorite food found for Johan. Um, there's also uh, a bunch of helper functions in the Haskell standard prelude. For example, um, from maybe takes a uh, the default value um, and a maybe, so just a, a let's say def. So from maybe takes a default value and then a maybe value. And if the maybe value actually contains just, it returns just what it contained. And uh, if it contains nothing, it returns the default value. So we can use that here like this. Uh, print the length of maybe, uh, let's say ice cream is sort of the default favorite food of everybody. Uh, maybe ice cream favorite. So here we're explicitly using this, oh no, not maybe, it's called from maybe. We're explicitly dealing with this uh, potentially missing value with this from maybe function, which lets, lets us specify the default value in the case that favorite uh, is actually nothing. So we'll run this program with, uh, use my name. It finds green papaya salad, oh, that didn't work. Oh no, green papaya salad is 18 characters long. Let's just print out the actual um, name of the food. So we look up my name in the dictionary of favorite foods. We find green papaya salad. And we look up uh, a key that's absent. We get the default value of ice cream. So that's how a purely functional language without the concept of null simulates uh, the semantics of values that are possibly missing. Um, another helpful way that I've used, uh, another way that I think about the maybe type is it's a list of precisely either one or zero values. So uh, in Java or Python, for example, uh, if, if you're writing, you're implementing a dictionary, you're looking up a key, um, and the, that, that key is missing from your dictionary, rather than returning zero or null or nothing, you return an empty list. And if the value is present, you return a list just with one thing in it. And uh, in that case, you're always getting a non-null value back. Um, that, and the list doesn't have the same semantics as um, the type that you're expecting to look up in the dictionary. So you can't confuse a list for um, your, your custom type from your your model or a string, for example, you actually have to use list semantics to get the value out um, and deal with the case where the list was actually empty. But anyway, I hope that you could follow along and I hope I didn't go too fast and I hope you think 
maybe is a really interesting data type and uh, type safe null values um, is a really cool concept from Haskell. And thanks for watching.